Hello everyone and welcome back to another tier video. The last one did phenomenal. I really cannot thank you guys enough. Phenomenal by my standards. Anyway, 380 views at the time of recording this one. By far my most viewed video. So thank you so much. And to anyone new around here, please make sure that you tune into this one. Anyone who is new who hasn't done it yet, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps out massively. So, thought we'd stick to the bandwagon. <clears throat> we'd stick with what we know, what we know works. Tier lists, and in front of us here, we can see the Liverpool team from this season that we're currently in. And I'm going to be rating every player in the squad based on how well they've performed this season. Now, we've got five tiers. We've got top tier, good, average, poor, and bad. And simply just going to be putting each Liverpool player in what tier I think is best suited to them based on how they've performed this season in all competitions, not just the Premier League. If a player is injured and has not featured this season, they're just going in the bad category because they're either not match fit, which is bad, or they just haven't been good enough to get in the team, which is bad. And side note, there is no likes of Conor Bradley or Luke Chambers in the team. They're youth products, so to speak, in terms of they haven't really had any features this season, so they just are not in the list. This is out and out the first squad. Starting off with Adrian. Uh, who's just bad. He hasn't featured. He's the third choice keeper, hasn't started any games, hasn't appeared in anything. We're in four competitions, hasn't featured once. So in the bad category he goes. Next up, we have Konate, top tier footballer, without a shadow of a doubt. Defensively, he has been superb this season. Quick, strong leader at the back, and he's adopted someone under his wing who we're going to get into shortly but top tier for me Canate. he's been brilliant he seems to have got over whatever injury issues he had and it's really refreshing to see someone step into that back line so comfortably alongside van dyke matip's done it for years Canate is now getting it going for himself and it's brilliant to see next up andrew robertson i think has actually been good if I'm being honest, he gets a lot of stick. And I've heard people say he's the weak link in our back line. No, 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 no. He is brilliant. He's been a superb servant to the club. This season, he has had his fault. The Brighton game in particular, it wasn't brilliant. But then you look at the Tottenham game. And that will get mentioned at least 20 times this video. I'm sorry, but that is just the way it's going to go. Robertson looked brilliant. And he's got so much energy. It's great going forward. Great at the back. And he deserves to be in the good tier. He doesn't deserve all the grief that he's been getting, in my opinion. But I understand why people are sceptical of him. Just in general, I can understand it. Next up, we have Allison, top tier. Again, the Tottenham game kept us in it. The Newcastle game, the same for Amaron's volley. Absolutely top tier. And that's why he's in the category. He's the best keeper in the world. And I don't think anyone can really have any arguments otherwise. Edison isn't up to his level. Neuer, not Neuer, Neuer's, I'm swear Neuer's retired. To Stegen, not to his level. Allison is just the best in the world. Next up, we have Gravenberg, who I'm putting in good. I don't think he's been top tier yet. He's still figuring out how he fits into this team. Is he a Wijnaldum replacement? Is he meant to defend more? Is he an attacking player similar to Sobislai? Is he meant to get goals and assists? Because that's what he's been doing, and he's been brilliant at it. The one game where I had question marks was the Tottenham match. He, some of the tackles he was making, I thought we were going to go down to eight men. He's a bit reckless, still still trying to find his feet, still at times can look a bit susceptible to being off the mark. Out of, like, if he hasn't got possession of the ball, sometimes it can be a bit slow, but when he's on the ball, he looks brilliant. So, so far, he's been good. Two assists, one goal. No major complaints from Gravenberch. Next up, we have Tiago. Hasn't featured, and I don't like Tiago too much anyway. He's got legs made of soggy malted milks. He is so... He do, he's never fit cop style, and I just don't understand keeping a player for that amount of money in the squad. He doesn't feature. He's too injury prone. He comes back from one injury, he gets another one. Now, it's his hip or something. I, let him go. Let the man go. He's brilliant on his day, sure, but when your day is once a year, it's like a, like a holiday... It doesn't, it, there's no point. So, Thiago for me this season, bad, hasn't featured. Endo, poor. And I feel bad for Endo with the games he has played. The 45 minutes against Leicester, he looked brilliant. Then in the next 45, didn't look particularly good. 
Then he's got the Tottenham game, he's playing out of position because we're down to nine men. He just hasn't found his rhythm yet, and he's in his thirties. Is he going to have the time to do that? Is he going to get into this squad? Is he going to be the Fabinho replacement? Probably not. But you know, in the he might be a good versatile player to bring on later on when we're winning games one 0 against tough teams. Maybe might be that James Milner role. Who knows? So far though, it hasn't worked. Next up, we've got Sobislai, top tier. The Leicester goal tells you all you need to know. It's the Villa goal tells you all you need to know. He's been world class and he's 22. He's 22. He's younger than me. He's 22 and he's doing things that footballers can only dream of when you first step into a Liverpool team. And the people are comparing him to Gerrard far too soon. I think the kit number and the celebration have a lot to do with that. But he's been unbelievable. And I'm really happy that he's fit into the squad for the price that we got him for as well. Superb. Next up, we have mm, Jota. It's like average. Now, Jota for me, has he's one of these players who can play bad, but he still scores. You know, he's he's just one of them type of players. And I don't think he was brought in to go on the wing. I think he was brought in to be in the middle. He was meant to be the Firmino replacement, so to speak, when that eventually happened and Firmino left. But Jota's been played out wide because we signed Gakpo and we've got Nunez. And now even with Gakpo in, injured, Nunez is the starting striker, so Jota's on the left and he's not that type of player. And I just don't think we know how to use him. He's, he comes up good with a goal, but if you look at most of his goals, they're coming from the centre. He's great in the air, and he's a great finisher, but he's never in the position now to do it. And it, he's average. He doesn't contribute a lot to me personally compared to the likes of Salah, Diaz, Gagbo. I just think Josh has been average this season, but he still comes up with a goal. West Ham, Leicester, you know... He's still important. Keep him. I, I love Jota. I think he's great. There's not a lot of players in this team I dislike, to be honest. But Jota, average season so far, in a very, very, in a very short way of explaining it. Next up, we have Darwin Nunez. We're going to say good goal contributions, three goals, two assists in the league, I believe. He doesn't, he doesn't, I've said it so many times, he doesn't know what he wants to do himself. He doesn't know if he wants to be scoring, he doesn't know if he wants to come deep, he doesn't know if he wants to go on the wing or in the middle, he doesn't know how he's going to beat players, but it works. It really does, and he's such a nightmare for teams to play against. And he'll have moments like the Union SG game where he misses the sitter, like the Aston Villa game where he misses the sitter, but then he'll score stupid goals like he does against West Ham. He'd like We saw last season, he'll score volleys and goals on the half turn and half volleys. And he'll score a bicycle kick in the future at some point, if not this season. But then he'll miss tap-ins, and he's frustrating to watch, but he's so exciting. I love Nunez. He's brilliant. Good, not top tier, because if he can get those flaws out of his system and we can find a way to unlock him, just, you know, find a way to make it work, and it will come good. Second highest scorer of the season, though, behind Mo Salah, who, by the way, there's no, might as well get out of the way, he's top tier. Five goals, four assists, eight games in the Premier League, scored in the Europa League. He's the best right winger, arguably, in the world. Keep him forever. Don't get rid of him. He's so good. And Salah, he's it's one of these players that, as he's getting older, he's finding different ways to adapt to the league. He, you know, some, he used to get in behind more. Now he holds up the ball for other players. He's great at putting a pass in. We saw it with Diaz, the Spurs game, the Chelsea game. He's so good in all departments, and it's refreshing to see that even when a player's getting older and older, he still finds new ways to fit into the system, whether that's Klopp or Salah, we don't know. But he's been brilliant, and he needs to go in that top-tier category. Next up, we have Alexis McAllister. We're going to say good. Uh, the West Ham game, pings are over the top for Nunez because he's further forward. Then the Brighton game, he's further back. We can see because of a mistake he makes. The Chelsea game, he's further back. They've walked through him. McAllister hasn't been unlocked. He's not been put into the position where he's best, which is that number 10 role or number 8 even. When he's in the number 6 role, 
he struggles. And I am of the belief that the deep line playmaker role doesn't necessarily work in the Premier League. I'm more of an out and out defensive midfielder, your Fabinho, your Kante, your Casemiro, your Rodri's, just for modern examples, recent examples. McAllister, for me, is a further forward player. He was at Brighton. He can play in a double pivot. But if you're going to do that, you might as well have Trent go into that position because Trent's not the best defensively either. And McAllister's in the same realm. He wants to be further forward. Forward. Not the best defensive minded player in the world can do it in the same way as Trent, but if, unless you're going to have Trent come into midfield alongside him in a double pivot and have Sobis Line Ravenberg or Sobis Line Jones or Elliot ahead of him, doesn't make a lot of sense for me personally. Speaking of the last one we mentioned there, Harvey Elliott, we're going to say average, which is harsh. I know it's very harsh. Elliot, for me, uh, seems a passenger at times. You'll have a game like the Newcastle game where he comes on, he's so dynamic and he wants to get forward and he brings players in. He'll commit to a tackle. He wants to beat a man, put a ball into a dangerous area. And then he'll have the Wolves game, he'll score. You know, he's electric, energetic. But then we'll have the Brighton game and he looks poor. He looks like a passenger. He doesn't know what he wants to do. He doesn't know if he wants to go out wide, be in the middle. He's not the best at tracking back. He's, but he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what he wants to do. And at times, he's, a, like I've said, he's a passenger in that midfield. And with players like Sobislai and McAllister and Gravenberch and Jones now pulling the strings in midfield, Elliot just feels like he's fallen further behind in the pecking order of things. And it's sad to see at the moment, but he could turn it around. He's still very young and that's easy to forget. Gomez, we're going to say good. Uh, he is susceptible to mistakes at times, as this whole squad is, let's be real. Everyone in this team makes a mistake. I've already mentioned Nunez. I haven't got on to Van Dijk yet. But Gomez, for me, the Tottenham game, he looked brilliant. When he's been called at right back, he's looked brilliant. He can look rigid at times. And I think the only thing that's keeping him out of that top tier category is the fact that he's not playing in his position. He's a centre back by nature. And at times, he doesn't like when players run at him. Um, we saw uh, he was brilliant in the Tottenham game, but he did get beat on the wing for the cross into Son. So he is he's he lacks pace. He doesn't he's not the best at turning and coming back and chasing an attacker. He's better in the middle, but the moment with the depth we've got and the lack of depth we've got at right back, it's clear that's why he's playing there and it doesn't do him any favours. He can look good, but not top tier, and that's why he's in the good category. Next up, we've got Gakpo average. Uh, again, harsh, I know, but Gakpo for me this season, he still comes up with a goal. And he, he does fit the Firmino role of his work can go underappreciated. What he does on the ball, providing space for the attackers, is brilliant. I was surprised to see him start against Tottenham when he did. He suffered an injury, he's out for a good few weeks. I think he's back after the international break, which is this weekend that it's over. But he won't be back just yet. I don't see him in the Everton game coming up. I just think Gakpo has a lot more to offer. Maybe try him on the wing. If the wingers on the left are the ones that have been getting the most criticism of our forward line, you know, Diaz and Jota, try Gakpo there. He was a winger at PSV. It's worth the gamble. In the middle, Jota's better in the middle. I'd put Jota there, swap them, see how it goes, and just let him flourish. He's a fast player. He's very physically strong as well for a winger. I see no reason to not give him a go there. Let him experiment and try and get the most out of him. The deep line playmaker role works for him, but this season it's not looked as good as it can be. Next up, Joel Matip. We're going to say top tier. Um, I do think he's been better than Canate in defense, in uh, centre back. And I think he's become, once again, the full-time partner of Van Dijk at centre-back. We saw him. I didn't expect him to start the Brighton game. I didn't expect to see him start the Tottenham game, but he did. He has looked brilliant. And the fact that we went into this win into this season expecting him to go, expecting him to leave in the summer, and there's now talk of a contract extension, is Tells you all you need to know. I love Joel Matty. I think he needs to stay for that one extra season, whether it's to get a finance, uh, to get money for him when we sell him, or just to get that extra year so we've got time to bring in a centre-back or gain Kwanzaa experience. Perfect. Joel Matty, for me, I think he's been absolutely superb. If Canate's in top tier, I think Matip's in top tier. Next up, we have... Who is that? That is Kwanzaa. I can't tell what's the light. And again, top tier. And I'm going to go back and change my mind. I think Canate has actually been good. I think Kwanzaa has been top tier. Canate 
you know, he's not really put the foot wrong, but thinking on it, he's Sean Matthews been better. I'd say Quans has arguably been better. Canate for me, good. Quanza has been a revelation. He's come in. No one thought he was going to be doing what he's doing, but he is. He's come in. He does that Van Dyke tackle where the ball's going to the opposition attacker. He comes in from behind, clears it. He can ping the diagonal pass across the bar. He's tall, fast, young, hungry. He looks brilliant. He came on in the Newcastle game at St. James Park with seven minutes left. Came on against Wolves. He started in the Europa League. He started in the EFL Cup against uh, Leicester. He's looked brilliant, and it's got people questioning whether we need to sign another centre back. I still think we do, but Fonza is he's, he could be here for a long time a long time, 10 plus years, and fill that mantle. But Van Dyke will eventually have to leave, and John Matty will have to leave. He's here for the long haul. Hopefully, if we can keep developing him, we could have a fantastic player on our hands. Badge Titch, we're going to put average. Um, haven't seen a lot of him. No bad performances. He's had to play it right back in the in the Europa League. He's got another injury now, I believe, so he's not in the squad. The only reason he's not going in pause is because the one game he's played, he's looked good. Um, not out, not incredible. So I couldn't put him in the good category, but in average, yeah, I think that's fair. Ben Doak as well, same sort of situation. Hasn't featured a lot, but he's seventeen. To be doing what he's doing at 17, he's looked really, really good. And there's talk of him being in rotation with Salah, the best right winger in the world. Ben Doak is got, has got competition there, but he's making a case for himself. In the Leicester game, he looked good. In the LASK, LASK game, he looked good. And the more I'm doing it, the more I'm talking myself in. I think he's actually looked good. He looks like a traditional winger, really. Yeah, I think good actually is fair. I think I've changed my mind. Well, well done me. Well done me. Next up, we've got Trent. Again, good. A bit susceptible defensively at times. The inverted role, I think teams have figured out how to beat it. They overload the midfield and then they have a way out wide. Brighton did it with Matoma. Trent is, again, it's the old story. He's great going forward. He's a bit poor at the back. I didn't think he looked bad in the Brighton game. Particularly, he did all right, but... Again, he's just not blowing me away defensively, and he could be better. He's definitely still an influence going forward towards the back end of last season and the start of the season he has been. He's not been dreadful by any means, but he's just not set the world alight. And I just think he needs a bit more contribution going forward. If for the England game, the other day he looked the best player on the pitch, so he's still got it, he's still capable of doing it. But I think with the new midfielders, the competition's a bit more fierce and he's still adapting to how we want to play. Uh, Curtis Jones, top tier, he's been playing phenomenal and at the start of the season I said to make or break he either does it this season or he goes a bit harsh but he's lived up to it the Tottenham game you know until he gets sent off we were on top and the, the more I look back on it the more I agree it was a foul it, I get that he's gone over the ball but he still followed through a bit heavily and you know the fact that we appealed and it was not given tells you all you need to know sad for him but when he comes back he's going to play he's going to want to get out there and play brilliantly and I think that's what will happen it's a shame we miss him for the Everton game but he is going to come back he's not injured we'll have him back soon Kelleher uh, good I just nothing really stand out but he's not a bit average by any means he's been a good shot stopper in the Leicester game you know he looked he, he, there was the goal obviously but he wasn't at fault for that so to speak He's looked good other than that. No real complaints or issues. Uh, next up, we have Simicast Average. In terms of back of left backs, there's not many better in the Premier League. I, th I think he's okay. He's just signed a new contract. He's going to be here for a while. In terms of a deputy to Robertson, there's worse to have. He hasn't done anything to stand out, but to have some Robertson set the level so high that now Simicast is... You know, he looks poor, but he's not. He's actually all right. He's a good backup to have. I've got no issues. And then two controversial ones. So Luis Diaz, I'm saying average. Don't think he's had a particularly great season. He set the standards so high for himself when he first came in. But then he, since then, he's had bad injuries. 
he runs around a bit like a headless chicken, not in a Nunez way where it's sort of controlled chaos. It's just a sprint at the opposition, head down, go kind of thing. It doesn't work for him sometimes. He runs himself into a corner. But he's still got goals. The Tottenham game, he looked great. He scored against uh, Bournemouth earlier on in the season. He's still a great player. Chelsea as well. So the ability is still there. I just think he's given himself such high standards that we hold him to them at times. And the comparisons to Mane definitely don't help. They're tough shoes to fill. And Van Dijk, I'm saying good. And this is the one that um, I... I'm going to get a lot of stick for. I think Van Dijk is still one of the best centre-backs in the world. But you can see he's lost the yard of pace this season. Maybe it's the age, he is in his 30s. Maybe it's the Pickford injury. Maybe it's a combination of both. But for me, the Tottenham game, he gets beat uh, for the goal. He's behind. He's in the wrong position for the defence to cover uh, Son. The Brighton game made a mistake there. The Newcastle game, he gets sent off. I just think that Van Dijk's pace was such a big factor, and seeing that on the decline, it's pretty clear that he's struggling at times, and it's disappointing to see. He's still one of the best centre-backs. Don't get me wrong, I Van Dijk is unbelievable, and Canate saying he wants a better career than Van Dijk, that's going to be difficult. Van Dijk is world class still and he's our captain we will back our captain I think he was the right choice as captain I completely agreed with it I just do think he has lost that bit of pace and it might be in a Michael Owen situation where he knows what he wants to do but his body physically cannot get in there different positions I know but it's still important to remember that he's come back from a horrible injury he is not getting any younger and this league now is quicker than ever so he is going to struggle at times mentally he's still one of the best center backs in the world physically this season he's not been one of the best and i think that that has caught up with him at points so there you have it there is my list thank you very much for watching please make sure to like and subscribe slightly longer video because i do tend to ramble if this goes anything like my england one i will do more of these please please let's get to 100 subscribers by christmas Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.